This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. My guest today on Sports Files is the new head coach of the Memphis Grizzlies, Dave Yeager. He's young, he's sharp, and he's confident. Dave Yeager is the new head coach of the Memphis Grizzlies, and he's ready to lead this team into the future. And while there are many Grizzlies fans who still question the decision to part ways with former coach Lionel Hollins, there's no denying the fact that Yeager has paid his dues and has earned his shot to be a head coach in the NBA. Today, Dave Yeager, up close and personal. <laughs> Congratulations on the new gig, and, and thanks for being with us. Thank we you. appreciate it. What was it like when Jason Levian came up to you and said, Dave, you got the job? Certainly a lot of, a lot of emotions and, and uh, relief. Um, obviously, I'm very excited to be asked to lead this franchise. And, um, you know, I love head coaching. I do. And so there's only 30 of these jobs. And to be asked to coach an NBA head team is very humbling. And uh, it feels really good. It feels really good. Uh, feels good to be a head coach. That's the that's the biggest thing. Uh, doesn't matter where it is, uh, but coaching basketball to me, and the, the biggest part of that, the most fun part of that, is being a head coach. How long do you think you've been ready now for the NBA as a head coach? I don't think. You know, I feel like my time in the minor leagues for seven years helped a lot. I don't know that I was ready right at that time. I think you know, understanding the league is a very important part of of the total development of being ready to, to sit in the first chair. So uh, having these six years, could I have used another five or six? Yeah. Could I have maybe been ready a couple? I don't know. You know, it's hard to say, but you just feel like uh, for me personally that the time in the minor leagues, uh, being the head coach for 350 games and seven years of all the ups and downs and the training camps and the post seasons and the injuries and the win streaks and the losing streaks and you know, those conversations that we enjoyed the most were sitting down a player and saying, hey, you know, so-and-so called and you've been called up and that's, that's right, the best right. in the world. Uh, and certainly, you know, guys not getting their dreams fulfilled or, or being injured and not getting called up. And uh, so all of those things uh, have led to my experience to, to be here. With all that said, why are you so confident in yourself, in yourself that you will succeed? I just feel like you know, we've, we've been successful in the past and uh, it's, it was obviously a minor league team. Uh, but head coaching is head coaching of pro basketball. And so uh, that gives me the confidence to know, you know, I have my voice. I know what my voice is. I had, know how I deal with players. Uh, you know, it's been asked, you know, how, how are you going to be with players because you were an, an assistant, now you're going to be the right, head. Right. And I, I think, you know, I know, I know my style as, as far as how I deal with every situation for the most part. And that's going to be no different with the players. I think the worst thing that I could do is, is to try to be somebody else and say, oh, now i got to act differently. I'm a head coach now. And, you know, I don't know that we were ever buddies with players uh, as an assistant coach. And I don't know that that'll be what it is as, as the head coach either. But I know that they're going to look at me and say, this is Dave. He's, he's the head coach, not this is Dave. He was the assistant coach. You know what I'm saying? So You went upper deck with that press conference speech, if you will. What you had to say, I think a lot of people, uh, they latched on to it. Did you prepare a lot for that? Was it off the cuff? What was that like as you prepared for the first time meeting the media as the head coach of the Grizzlies? Well, it was definitely from the heart, you know, and I think you've been around me long enough to sure. know, you know, I'm, I'm very conversational in the way that I speak and uh, I'm out there and I think that I look people in the eye and I feel good about spending time talking to people and I think people need to know and feel that when you, you look in the camera and, you know, like, this is me, you know, and uh, I'm very comfortable. Uh, so it, it was a little, a little bit prepared, but not like overly done. It was just like I had some thoughts that I wanted to get through and uh, I wanted to, to share that, you know, I am confident. I am very humbled about the opportunity and uh, I, I like the group that we're going forward with, our front office and all the, the feeling of going forward together. And all of those things that you're talking about at the press conference uh, was definitely genuine. It was definitely sincere. Dave, what was your relationship like with your predecessor and what did you learn from Lionel? The relationship is, is great. We're fine. Um, you know, 
he just did a, he did a very good job of being direct. I think you know uh, that would be the one thing, you know, nothing festered, and and I want that to carry on. Uh, and another thing that I learned from him, which I I it just solidifies my confidence in myself, is you'd be comfortable in your own skin. And and Lionel was that way, and uh, and I will be that way as well. When you found out that he was not going to be retained as the head coach, did you immediately contact Jason Levy and say, "Listen, I'm interested," or did they come to you? How did that work? Well, we just we just talked about it at, at a point after that time, but uh, certainly that was a very emotional time, you know, not knowing, you know, where where is Coach Holland's going to go, and and that means us, or should we look at other places, or you know, not not knowing, and then that thing came up, and we had conversations with with uh, with Jason, and uh, so yeah, it was it was very emotional. What do you think will be the the toughest part of this job, and the thing that you'll be most comfortable with having the prior experience? <clears throat> Uh, toughest part of the job is going to be probably right here at this at this conference table. Uh, I've never had five assistant coaches before mm -hmm. uh, in the minor leagues. It was one, and so and but I knew this. You know, this is something that I've. You got in the NBA and you're like, okay, I got a couple years in, and then you think, okay, what else can I be doing? And so I started studying. Like, what would I? What would I? What do I need to get better at if I do get to sit in the first chair? And that's one of the things that uh, that I was uh, considering. So uh, the, the part that I'm most comfortable with. Uh, the part that I'm most passionate about, this is, this is what I love, is when you walk in the huddle with two minutes left to go in the game and you're clear and you're concise and you're confident and you just roll in there and, you know, just roll in there. That's a bad way to But, you know what I'm saying? And you come in there like, here's the plan. Here's what we're going to do. It's your game. I'm going to give you the opportunity to win this thing. It's right here. You can count on me for, you know, putting you in a position to be successful. And when you do that, the, the, the confidence that your team gathers not in, in just you and in themselves, but in the opportunity to win and that, that when these situations keep coming up, because 82 games is a lot, they come up. Exactly. NBA games are close games. Uh, that To me, that's the most fun. On the court, you're going to confer with your assistant coaches. You're going to map out strategy for a certain play or a certain thing you want to do in the game. And you're going to make the decision. You're going to make the ultimate, the final decision. Within the organization, you're going to have a say. So are a number of other people. But Jason, Jason Levy and the buck will stop with him. Are you fine with that, especially if it's a, a personnel move that he makes with consultation mm -hmm. but makes the final decision? Are you good with something like that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think there'll ever be any, uh, well, Dave said we wanted to do this or, you know, Jason, that was, that wasn't my guy. That was, you know, exactly. and, and uh, exactly. that's what, that's what uh, when I was referring to earlier about the feeling going forward and doing stuff together. We, we're going to get after each other and, and argue our points and try to be strong about how we feel about something. Because if, if we don't have that, then we can't be clear on stuff. But when, the, when the, we walk out of the door, it's going to be arm in arm, and there's going to be, there's going to be one, one voice. And uh, I think the best franchises in the league do it that way, mm -hmm. and uh, top to bottom, and that's how we're going to be. Dave, you touched on this a little bit earlier, but now you're the head guy. So you have this relationship you've built with a number of these players and a good relationship in that. A lot of times the assistant coaches – good cop, the head coach is bad cop. Uh, do you feel there'll be any issues in the respect that you've gotten as a, an assistant now as a head coach from the same type of player? No, I, I just think, you know, uh, people always want to answer to a question like, oh, what are you going to do when this happens? Right, and, right. And, uh, Scenarios. Yeah, and so what happens is that, that's just the tip of the iceberg. And what nobody sees is all of the work that you do in building that relationship. Mm -hmm. And so you can't say, well, I would just do this or I would just, because there's not a pat answer. The answer is that there's a relationship that's going to be built on respect, uh, on trusting each other, and on hard work and doing it together. And so that, that is going to eliminate a lot of those things, that scenarios that may, may come up. All right, let's talk about the team. First of all, what must this team improve upon? to become even better? I think we, you know, we're going to push the basketball up the floor to start offense quicker. And uh, if you know, we, our wings run and they have an opportunity to catch and score, then awesome. Uh, but I, you know, I don't think that we're going to run up the floor and shoot jump shots in the first five seconds of the, of the clock. Uh, we want to pressure the rim a lot. That just means we want to keep the floor open and drive it. And then what we're going to do is here comes our bigs. And now they're going to give it, be able to work in more space when the ball is going bang, 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 and Zach, boom, and he catches it. And he doesn't have to go, okay, this guy's right here, and then that guy's ready to go. And, like, 
hopefully we can get this thing where, where guys are flying out at guys, we can drive it, we can hit it, we got him ducking in or we got Mark and obviously we're going to run plenty of sets through those guys. And that falls upon the shoulders of, of Mike Conley as the facilitator to, to move it quickly. A little bit. I think he unfairly gets a lot of the uh, criticism of us playing a little slow uh, mm -hmm. and going forward. Uh, it's incumbent and I've told all the guys that I've met with, it's not just Mike, it's not just the wings, it's not just the bigs, it's not the coaches, it's all of us are going to demand it from minute one. So between here and minute one, you better get in shape. And uh, I think, you know, you're going to see uh, one of the things, that, there's a lot of positives that come with it, and I'm excited about that part of it. But you may see a couple turnovers, a little because you play a little faster to start, but we will then bring those back down, and hopefully that will be our identity is to go with our grit and grind, you know, that will never go away. That's who we are. And you're exactly right, Dave. We know the DNA of this team. We know the grit and grind. We know playing physical. And it landed you in the Western Conference Finals. But in the Western Conference Finals against San Antonio, they were able to exploit a team that offensively had some liabilities. I don't know what's left. I don't know what you can get. I know you can't comment specifically on, on players. Mm -hmm. But we talk about this each and every offseason. You've been here long enough. How do you get a shooter? How do you get more... Uh, ability to shoot from the outside to open up things and keep the defenses honest. Yeah, well, certainly we want to grow from within and, and put in a system of ball movement and people movement. We need to open the floor up a little bit. And as far as what, what goes on outside of what I can control in there, uh, we, we do need an NBA basketball player. You know, I mean, like you or I could go maybe make enough shots to be considered a shooter, you. right? <laughs> but but we're, we're certainly not good enough to be, you know, I don't know that there's a guy out there you can just get and just say, well, we just stand him in the corner. I, I don't think uh, you, you still got to get good players and, and playmakers, and uh, I'm, I'm excited about where we're headed. Do you have a championship caliber team? I would say if, if things fall right, which is to say every team needs to say that, uh, that, you know, we're right there in that conversation, absolutely. You mentioned Franklin and what he brings to the table. He fell into your laps, everything I've heard, first round grade by many, you get him in the second round, how big was that? And what was that like for you, the first draft as the head coach? Well, it happened very, very quickly because of the, the, the press conference <laughs> and, and dealing with all the, the media and stuff in the afternoon. So, uh, you know, he's a guy that there's a lot of high-fiving going on. And, and, and obviously we wish him that maybe if he wanted to be drafted higher. But for us and for our organization to get a player that, you know, should have gone way higher and uh, for one reason or other, no fault of his or his agent's own with his ankle, he fell to us and uh, to our benefit. What has fan reaction been to you, for you so far from people that have been able to contact you? It's been uh, really, really positive. You know, I, I'm out. You know, I'm out there. Uh, people on the street, it's been positive. And, and church and, you know, the calls and the, the texts and the emails and uh, things have been very, very positive. How will you handle criticism if it comes? Oh, it'll come. <laughs> right? It's not if, it's when. Uh, it, it'll happen. Uh, you just deal with it head on. I don't think that uh, hiding uh, is just, it, I'm going to go out there and do the best job that I can and I'm going to be me. And if I do that, then... Uh, I'll be able to sleep at night. How was your relationship like with the CEO, Jason Levian? It's good. It's good. I mean, I, I really like the things that he talks about. I like the way that he wants this culture to be. Uh, and I like the way that he, he set up his vision going forward for not just the next six months, you know, for going out for four or five years and, and talking about the tools that, that we need as a coaching staff or uh, with our team going forward. Do you feel comfortable if you need something asking for it? Yeah. Yeah. He's made that uh, very, very clear that Whatever tool it is, and, and uh, I don't refer to players or coaches as tools, okay? Like, right, but, right. you know, anything that we need down here, technology, whatever else, okay? And then let's talk about the players and let's talk about the staff and what do you, what do you need to be successful, and uh, then let's do it together. I asked you about the fans' reaction. What's it been like from the players that you've had a chance to talk with or maybe even meet with? You try to meet face-to-face -to -face with as many as I can, uh, talking and texting to as many people as I can, and... Uh, our guys have been very, very positive. Uh, talking about, you know, the way we went out wasn't fun. You know, losing the, the way we did to San Antonio, that, that part wasn't fun. So guys feel like, okay, what else, can we do to, what else can we do to improve? And one of the things is getting the ball up and playing with more speed into offense and opening up the offense. And there's a lot of agreement up and down our roster. Yeah, I'm in. You can count on me. I will run. You know, and so... Now, you know, we got to hold those guys accountable to that. How excited are you? 
It's hard to tell, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Have you lost that smile for one moment? You won't see. I mean, I'm pretty much the same guy uh, all the time. I think day in and day out, people that deal with me know that uh, they're going to get the same guy. But, yeah, it'll come down a little bit maybe. All right. There's, that's all the tough questions, but I got five for the road for you. I do this with all, my, uh, all the folks I interview. Okay. Question, quick answer, first thing that comes to mind. What is your favorite professional sports team in any sport? You can't say the Memphis Grizzlies. That's the yeah, obvious. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, Minnesota Vikings uh, being the home, the home state uh, team where there's only one. The whole state is behind one franchise, football-wise. And they're finally getting a new stadium, right? I can't. I don't know. There were all rumors that they're going to move, so hopefully they don't. The dome. The dome's been there a long time. <laughs> the dome's been there a long time. <laughs> the dome's falling apart. Your favorite professional athlete of all time? Oh, that uh, Joe Montana. Is it no, Joe Montana? It's not a Viking. No, that's it's Joe Montana, just flat out winner, you know. Mm -hmm. And and if it was my age, you know, you're pretending when you're playing three on three in the backyard right. that that's your that's your guy. Just seemed to be pure and play the game the way it was supposed to be played. Was football your sport more than basketball growing up? It seems like with foot answer so far with football. We played a lot of you know. A lot of pickup, whether it be basketball or, or, mm -hmm. or football and all the family gatherings you can get. I, my dad's the oldest of 11. Wow. So there's not a <laughs> – you would have four teams of uh, basketball fives if we played that way. No, we had everybody get out and we, we were slinging around. Favorite music, genre, musician, band? Uh, Who do you listen to? My wife crazy. It's the 80s. It's the 80s. 80, what 80s what band in particular? Oh, any of them from 19 late 80s. Uh, late 80s. Yeah. The, the the metal or the hair bands? Yeah, what the are hair we talking bands, here? the metal. The foreigners, the journeys still, of the world, yeah, the yeah, poisons. Yeah, absolutely. Elton John. I mean, I'm all, I love it. Love the 80s. You get the big fake wig on and start rocking at no, home and all that? No. no, you don't do that. Okay. Favorite movie of all time? Uh, Braveheart. Braveheart. Mm -hmm. Why? It's just the passion. Mm -hmm. The why, why are we fighting for? Can you take that? <laughs> creed of of uh, Mel Gibson as Braveheart and take it into uh, your new job. I uh, I don't know. I, I just I, I love I love the past. A little violent, but uh, sure. passion was good. Final question for you: favorite television show of all time? You probably don't get a chance to watch too much. But no, I mean it's got to be Sports Center. <laughs> Sports Center? You're only about the 50th guest I've had. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. But no, but. It came when we were coming up. We, you know, we were sitting there eating our cereal at, right. at 7 a.m. and there's Chris Berman and da 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 da, and that's what we grew up with. And any time of day, it doesn't have to be 7 a.m. Right? It is now. You can that's find right. it all the time. That's right. Dave, we uh, we congratulate you once again. Best of luck. It's going to be a great thing for me working with you personally as the new head coach of the Grizzlies. And go get them. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dave. Needless to say, it has been a whirlwind for Dave Yeager ever since last week's introductory press conference. There has been a tremendous demand on his time with countless interviews and, of course, the draft, and now the free agency period is underway. There was even a trade that happened the night of the draft, which sent Grizzlies forward Darrell Arthur and a second-round pick to Denver for center Costa Kufis. And earlier this week, the Ohio State product was introduced to the Memphis media. Yeah, thanks, everyone, for being here. Uh, one, one of our priorities uh, this offseason was adding size and length and skill uh, to our front court. And uh, we feel uh, excited um, that this man to my left, Costa Kufis, has, has joined our team. Uh, the trade has been completed, and he's now a, a member of the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, Costa is not only a very skilled athlete and skilled player who started over 80 games for the Nuggets this year, uh, was a bit of a thorn in our side. Uh, if you go back and look at the games we played against him this season. Uh, but he had a terrific year, showed a lot of growth, a lot of, of development in his game. And he's also a, a real professional, a hard worker. Uh, he's known for his work ethic and his professionalism and his approach to the game. And I think he's going to fit in very well uh, here as a member of the Memphis Grizzlies. You know, with Memphis past, this past season making the Western Conference Finals, you know, I'm very honored to be part of this organization. Um, I'm here to help them with everything they need with another big coming off, coming off playing minutes and uh, 
you know, I just my ultimate goal and everybody else's ultimate goal is try to win a ring, and uh, that's what our mindset is. And uh, you know, I think we have all the pieces of the puzzle to have a successful season for that for next year. As Jason said, Costa was a bit of a thorn in the side of you guys uh, this past season. What does it mean to have somebody as skilled as he is to go along with Mark and just to have that type of firepower as your bigs? <clears throat> Certainly, he uh, he is very skilled, uh, but he's also a guy who doesn't need the basketball and he can make plays. And that's that's what made me mad about that game. He's getting he's just activity, uh, his length, his uh, want to around the basket, getting tip ins, creating extra possessions for his team. Uh, he's a he's a good IQ guy, and uh, and we're going to ask him for more. And that's what he's saying. He feels like he's got more in him. I know that he's got more in him. I think that his best days are in front of him, basketball wise. Twenty two, twenty four, excuse me, in the prime uh, of his career. And uh, we're going to put him on the move. Uh, we want our bigs on the move. I feel like he's a guy that can play with Zach. He can play with Ed, and he can play with Mark at times. And uh, I'm not afraid to try any of those. Uh, and we've talked about our style of play, and obviously with Denver, they get the ball up and down the floor. Uh, we're trying to get the ball up and down the floor and, and be active and getting into our pick and rolls and beginning our offense much quicker. That's where he comes from, and I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to suit him very well. Three, two, one. Last month, the Germantown Charity Horse Show celebrated its 65th anniversary. The annual equine showcase began in 1948, when the Germantown Civic Club and Oak Grove Hunt Club combined forces hosting the inaugural show on the Germantown High School football field. And it's been going strong ever since. The five-day event raises thousands of dollars for local charities and the Germantown community and features an all-volunteer organization. And there's something for everyone with hunters and jumpers and saddle-bred and shod walking horses, plus roadsters and carriage drivers and several new events this year. Today, we want to give you a taste of what the show is all about. This is our 65th year that we've been in the business with a variety of horses that we've had. We won the largest one in the Mid-South to have a variety of shows. And mostly we started at 7.30 in the morning with hunters and jumpers. And tonight, on Saturday night, today, we're going to have a $25,000 Grand Prix, which is going to be exciting. We already have about 21 horses already entered into that, in that class. And then we go from there with the pleasure walking horses, uh, speed of horses, the Palafinas, and we just, we've got everything. And we've got carriages. And this is for the Exchange Club for Abused Children. That's where the charity organization is. And we got uh, 265 permanent stalls here. We got over 300 uh, stalls in the tents put up. And we are full. This is, I mean, maxed out this year. And they got about 25 campers that people come in with their campers and picnic. Everybody just comes to have a good time. It's a five day show. It, it, the price of the tickets are cheap. And for the children, uh, $3 and adults, $5. You bought the tickets in advance, you get ten, five tickets for $10. And so it's, a, it's really a just a happening, and it's really a, a fun, entertainment place to be. I've been riding since I was like five years old. I started like at two foot in the short strap, but then I finally got to here and he started as a green pony, which is about two years ago, and then he's at the regular.
And if you missed it this time, there's always next year. And that will do it for this week's show. As always, you can watch any of our previous episodes by going to our website at WKNO.org and clicking on KNO Tonight. Enjoy what's left of your 4th of July holiday. Be safe. Happy birthday, America. And we'll see you next time.